Too Fast, Too Furious is one of the dumbest movie titles, yet most freaking awesome movie titles I have ever heard. Hey guys, welcome to my review of Too Fast, Too Furious. So the story for Too Fast, Too Furious picks up where the last one left off, and this has Paul Walker, not a detective anymore, living in Florida, because you know, all the good shit happens in Florida. So in this movie, Paul Walker goes undercover with a childhood friend in order to implicate a local drug lord. In this movie, they have to make this delivery and go through all these obstacles and everything, and if you think it sounds stupid just like the last movie, it is. Did I enjoy it like the last movie because it's so stupid? Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about Paul Walker. He's just as out of place and not very well acted as in the last movie, but... I've come to enjoy him. His childhood friend, played by Tyrese Gibson, is hilarious. I just, I actually like watching these two work off of each other. They actually have chemistry, and it's it's pretty fun to watch. Eva Mendez is in the movie. Yeah, Eva Mendez. Not a very good actor, but damn, she's hot. Even Ludacris is in the movie. I'm actually a fan of Ludacris's music, and anything that he's in. I'll watch, because I think he's actually hilarious. And so for the bad things in this movie, the acting still sucks. It, like, it really feels phoned in just as much as the last one. They haven't really improved on anything. But you don't go see these movies for the acting, really. What you do see them for is car racing action. And remember how I had mentioned in the last movie, the action, you know, the car chases and everything weren't very well shot. There was a lot of shaky cams. Well, they improved on it a little bit here to where it's a little bit more interesting to look at, but they also added a lot of really, really, really bad CGI and green screen effects, and they look awful. And surprisingly, there are a couple plot holes in this movie that just stick out to you. Like, if you're really watching this movie and you catch the plot holes, you're just like, wait a minute, that doesn't make any sense, but does it make the movie any less enjoyable? No, because, again... You kind of like, this is the kind of movie you got to leave your brain at the door for. But one of the better things is that they did improve on the camera work in some scenes. And there isn't music blaring, you know, over scenes of dialogue and everything. They've actually improved on a few of the filmmaking standpoints in this movie. One complaint I had with the last movie is that there wasn't really any classic cars except for the 1968 Dodge Charger at the end that Vin Diesel drove. Which is like one of my dream cars and it made me want to cry when I saw it got wrecked in the end. But... Yeah, but in this movie, they, they up it a little bit. You see a little bit more of the, you know, the classic cars. They believe you see a, a Chevy Camaro that looks like a 68 or a 69, don't quote me on that. And there's a Dodge Challenger in there, if I remember correctly. And it's great to see old cars in this movie. You know, I love seeing old muscle cars. It's, you know, like I mentioned, those are my favorite kind of cars. And you also get to see them get wrecked, which also made me want to cry. And maybe it's better just to see these crappy little race cars get wrecked rather than classic um, cars. Uh, it's kind of depressing when you think about it. But what it comes down to, is this movie just as enjoyable as the last movie because it's just stupid fun? Yes! I mean, if you like the last movie, you're gonna like this movie. If you didn't like the last movie, this movie is in no way going to change your mind. But I still enjoyed it for what it is. It's stupid, fun, and I would recommend it. I really would. Now, a friend of mine mentioned to me that Tokyo Drift is when they start to get kind of bad. So, let's see how this goes. But anyway, as far as we're going with this, like, I'm actually kind of enjoying these movies more than I thought I would. So, let's see where they go and lead up to all these heist movies that don't have a lot to do with racing and have cars involved in them way too much. But, anyway... I'm getting ahead of myself here. So, anyway, guys, that's it for me. As always, if you like what you see, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. The link is also in the description below. Be on the lookout for the rest of my Fast and Furious reviews. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.